Okay, let's talk about positive and negative numbers. This is probably one of the top, uh, I would say top five areas where students get math problems wrong is they simply don't know their positive and negative number rules as well as they think. Okay, so the whole purpose of this video is to, you know, dispel any confusion and give you uh, two easy rules that you will never make a mistake again with positive and negative numbers. So that is the goal. All right, so uh, here we have uh, one rule, we'll call this rule one, and then we got this other rule over here, rule two. Let's go ahead and start with rule one. Okay, so uh, rule one will cover uh, positive and negative numbers when we have multiplication or, div or division going on, okay? So let's look at an example. This is very, very simple. So if I have negative two times negative two, the answer is what? Well, hopefully you already know that it's going to be a positive four, okay? So if uh, the rule goes like this, if the signs are the same, okay, so we have a negative here and a negative here, so same, let's do it this way, same signs, our answer is going to be positive all the time. So if this is a positive two times a positive two, we have positive four. Negative two times a negative two, going to be a positive four, okay? And the, the, um, the rule, okay, uh, obviously if, this, if the signs are different, so let's go like this, different signs, all right, then the answer will be negative. So let's take a look at something like this. Uh, negative 8 divided by a positive 4. Okay, so here, this is negative, this is positive. All right, so when we do this division, our answer is obviously going to be 2. But what is the sign? The signs are different. The numbers here are different. So my answer is going to be negative. So this rule right here applies to both multiplication and division. Super easy, and if you can remember this, okay, this covers, what, 50% of the math operations that you're doing. So we just uh, covered multiplication and division uh, situations, okay? Very, very easy, all right? So hopefully, you know, take notes, you know, uh, remember this, because, again, uh, it's an easy rule, but it's also easy to forget, okay? Do not rely just solely on your calculator or your your mental memory. Um, when you're kind of mastering this, like double check yourself, right? When you're doing your homework or or whatnot, you know, you'd be like, okay, wait a minute, am I doing this correct? You know, have this little on like you know rule uh, rules here, uh, like on a three by five index card or in your notes. That way, you can always make sure that you're kind of creating the right math habits in your brain. All right, so let's go on to rule number two, and this is gonna cover addition and subtraction situations. So basically this rule is the same. So if you know how to add or subtract, you're basically, we're doing the same thing here, okay? Now this one is going to be a little bit more involved, and I think this is where students kind of um, find positive and negative number uh, concepts a little bit more confusing, but here's, I'm going to give you a way to, to think about this rule. Okay. That's nice and easy. And we're going to use the concept of money, all right? Everyone's favorite topic. So let's, let's talk about money. All right. Let's use money as our model here for rule two, uh, the second rule. Okay. Rule number two here. All right. So how is this going to work? Just let's just think of money um, in this manner, all right? So let's say we have a uh, positive three, okay? And we're gonna add it to uh, seven, all right? So when we have a positive number, we don't need to write a little positive sign like this. So this is positive three plus a, po a positive seven. So this is just simple addition, right? So the answer is 10. Now, I want you to think of this in terms of a dollar situation, okay? So this is like having three dollars, okay? And then someone gives you seven dollars. So in total, you have ten dollars. So that's pretty cool, right? All right, now let's kind of change this around, all right? Let's put, instead of uh, having positive signs here, let's think of this uh, in terms of negative signs. So let's have negative three 
plus negative 7. And now let's figure out what this answer is going to be, okay? Now, negative 3, right? If I have negative $3, okay, again, we're trying to use money here as our model. What does that mean, okay, to you, right? Well, it means that you have $3 of debt. You don't really have money. You have less, you have no money, you have debt, right? Let's say, yeah, I have no money in my pockets and I actually owe somebody $3, right? So that's what negative $3 means. And then you add another $7 in debt. So how much total debt do you have, right? So here you're like, one of your friends are like, hey, give me back my $3 that I uh lent you and you don't have any, you don't have any money and then some other friend comes up to you and be like oh yeah give me my seven dollars that i lent you you're like oh man in total debt i have this three and this seven so i have negative ten dollars in debt so negative three plus negative seven is negative ten okay so if you kind of remember that you know when you're adding and subtracting uh, positive and negative numbers, just think of uh, it in terms of money. This is going to go a long, long way to uh, help you avoid confusion. Now, let's continue on with uh, some more examples here, okay? All right, what about, uh, let's say I have negative 7 plus 3, okay? So what do you think this is going to be? So if you, if you feel like you got the concept down, all right, then, uh, you know, maybe go ahead and uh, try to get this, you know, try to answer this. But negative 7 plus 3, this is like saying I have negative 7 in debt. I owe somebody $7, but then somebody gives me $3, right? So somebody gives me 3 bucks. Uh, like I have $3 in my pocket, but I owe this person over here uh, this uh, $7. So how much money do I actually have? Well, I don't have any money, okay? But my debt situation has improved, right? And I give this $3 to this person. Okay. All right. Hey, listen, I don't have all your money, but here's three bucks. So what happens? Well, I still owe you four, uh, $4, right? So negative seven plus three equals negative four. Okay. So hopefully you can kind of see the pattern here. Now it's this number is larger. Okay. Meaning that this negative seven is larger than the positive three. So our sign is negative. So when you're learning these rules, there's ways to think of it that in, in you know, to think of these rules in, in that manner. Okay. But that all that really kind of means if we, if we use money as a model here is that we have more debt than we have money. So we still have debt going on. Okay. All right. Now let's switch this around and let's do this problem. Seven plus negative three. Okay. So what's the situation there? Well, here I have $7. So, yay, I got $7 in my pocket. And one of my friends comes up and says, hey, where's my three bucks I lent you? You're like, oh, okay, I got you. I got you here. Let me give you those $3, okay? After you give them those $3, okay, what do you have left? You have uh, $4 remaining, okay? Positive four, all right? And, of course, we would just write this as four. All right, so... Hopefully, you're kind of getting the idea here, right? So, okay, this is not too bad. So, if you always think of this in terms of money, you'll be okay. Now, let's kind of put another twist on this and really talk about uh, uh, the subtraction situation. So, let's say I have uh, 3 minus 7, all right? 3 minus 7, okay? Now, here... You know, what we've been doing before is just addition. You know, we we uh, our examples involve the addition operator. So what we want to do is take this problem, okay, and think of it in, in another way, all right? And this is what we call plus negative. So what I want you to do is this subtraction sign, okay? I want you to turn it into an addition sign, okay? All right, so you're going to take the subtraction sign, turn it into addition sign. You're like, hey, what's going on, though? What we're going to do is take this, uh, this, this subtraction sign, and we're going to put it right here. Boop. Okay? So we're going to take the subtraction sign, this operator, turn it into addition sign, but then put this right here in front of the 7. Okay? Let's write that a little bit better, like so. So actually kind of do a, let's make it a little bit more like this, negative 7. So 3 minus 7 is equivalent to the problem 3 plus negative 7, 
Okay. So here, what's the situation? Well, you have $3, but you owe somebody $7. Okay. So what's your financial situation? Well, you still owe $4. Okay. More, right? <laughs> you still have $4 of debt. Okay. So I can go on and on with more examples, but if you understand these two rules, this is kind of uh, do a quick recap. Okay. So we're dealing with a multiplication and division. It's the same rule. Okay. So same signs, all right. Negative and negative or positive and positive answers. Positive goes for both division and multiplication. If you have different signs going on, the final answer will be negative. Very simple. Okay. Rule number two, we'll call it the money rule, right? So it applies for both adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers. And we talked about, uh, you know, how to think of numbers in terms of money, if you will. And the one big thing with subtraction is we're going to take subtraction problems and turn them into addition problems by doing this little plus negative. Now, one little thing here, let's just kind of do one last thing. Okay. I don't want to leave you without all the mathematical, uh, you know, rules that you really want to know. So let's say, let's say we had two minus, let's say a negative five. Okay. So how do we handle that situation? Well, we'll still want to do this little plus negative. So it would be like two plus a minus of a minus five. Okay. So just as, to make sure, okay, there's no confusion out there, a negative of a negative five, oftentimes a negative sign at mathematics is we can think of it as being the opposite. So what's the opposite of a negative five? That is going to be a positive five. So that'd be two plus five. And of course we know that's going to be seven. Okay. So of course the second rule has more variations going on, but it's not difficult. Okay. You got to, you know, don't, if you're learning math, okay, the, the, the key is this, don't try to learn math by just memory. Okay. It's not going to work, you know, just being like, Oh, I got to memorize all these different crazy rules. And if you don't understand the rules and you're trying to memorize them, you're definitely going to make a mistake. So that's why I try to, uh, you know, explain these concepts in easy ways for you to understand. So hopefully this, uh, video helps you out. If you can get these rules down and never again, make a mistake <laughs> with your positive and negative numbers, you're going to, uh, significantly increase your math scores. Okay. No doubt about it. Because as a math teacher of many, 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 many years, I can't tell you the thousands, tens of thousands of times where I had to take my little rent pin out and be like, oop, wrong. Uh, it's take away to just, you know, people's math scores going down, 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 because they make, you know, little easy errors or they don't understand positive and negative numbers as well as they need to. But if this particular video, uh, you know, was good for you, well, then make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.